Hello and welcome, everyone. And today I am joined by none other than Ethanamail, where we're going to be talking about the Challenge USA Season 2 Season Review. Uh, how you doing, Ethanamail? Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, Big Brother is coming to a close right now, so I am happy to talk about something that isn't Big Brother. I've been doing that for the last three months nonstop, basically, and I'm excited to talk about this because... I thought it was pretty good. I uh, talk about a little bit of Big Brother, a uh, very little bit of Big Brother uh, going into the finals, at least. Uh, what do you think about there being so little representation of Big Brother, albeit they were like a third of the cast this season? There was a big Big Brother and Survivor war going on throughout the season, and Survivor just kept prevailing. I can't say I'm like that disappointed with how it all turned out, because I, I think uh, narratively it ended up being pretty well, but the Big Brother players could have done a little better. We saw exactly what happened last season with Survivor just absolutely dominating this season. I mean, Survivor Strong happened yet again, and they didn't even do, they weren't even in that strong of an alliance all together like they did season one. It, it felt like Chris was on the outs. Sebastian was doing his own thing. Uh, Chanel, Desi, and Michaela were in their own trio alliance, which was the nucleus for every. What do you think about Survivor this season and how they played the game? I guess it's kind of interesting because it was a little bit messy in like the grand scheme of things where they kind of had Michelle and then they kind of like threw Cassidy to the wolves. And then Chris was there, I guess more towards the end, but then that relationship was a little wonky. I don't know. It's like, it was a very solid core, but then once, once you start expanding, it gets very messy. We can all agree that the surprising player this season was Chris thrown into four eliminations and he's able to win every single one of them heading into the finals. And not only that, he's going into the finals, the only rookie going up against Johnny Bananas, a seven-time champ, Fessel, a multi-time uh, finalist, and then you have also Corey, who is now a long-standing MTV challenger, yet he comes out on top. Really surprising how well he was able to do. Somebody that I don't think we were surprised they did well, but Desi was able to pull out the win. What did you think about Desi's game plan this season, as well as making it to the finals and winning? Yeah, well, I'm definitely glad that Desi got her redemption from last season. That was def definitely one of the worst parts was seeing how Enzo's quit took out Desi in the USA 1 final. So to see her come back was exciting, and to see her win was also exciting. But it seemed like her gameplay was just very much like, I'm going to stay loyal. Then when she finally found herself in a position where she had to you know, make the move against Tori... Um, immediately afterwards, she was like, oh, no, like that goes against my morals. I got to go back and say, you know, my apologies and go right back to being fully loyal. I mean, I like when people backstab and then are just like suck it up. Um, so that was a little uh, sad to see Desi uh, instead of going full out against Tori, just being like, oh, I'm sorry. Here, let's try working it together again. But I also think narratively it was really cool to see Desi win. I'm definitely not upset by Desi winning at all. She, I'm pretty sure she was our winner picks. Yeah, we will get into all of our previews and predictions and uh, all of that in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, we not surprising. We did pick her as our, our winner picks on the women's side. So we picked two players each out of the Big Brother Survivor and MTV players to kind of be like who to look out for. And lucky for us, there's only two Survivor guys. So yeah. we were able to choose between Sebastian and Chris. Oh, and so that's we, true. Yeah, we uh, we lucked into picking Chris and saying, hey, you should watch out for Chris. So mm -hmm. we kind of backed in on that one. But let, let us get into the, some of the people that we pointed out on who we should keep our eyes on. And I mean, not to put you on blast, but you did put pick Tyler, who was actually somebody to look out for. But your uh, woman Big Brother player to look out for was Amira who was <laughs> one of the first players, if not the first player to be eliminated from the season. What do you think about uh, uh, Amira's performance? <laughs> not to put myself on blast, to do the opposite. I think what I said actually translated pretty well to what happened, where what I said is that in Big Brother 24, Amira came second in a lot of competitions, just like she was very close mm -hmm. to winning, but just fell short. And that's kind of what happened in her elimination. You know, she was sent into that first elimination against Michelle. It was like, it was the 1500 balls they had to get out of the pool. Yeah. Um, 
and she lost by, I think it was like 11 balls. I, mean, I'm, I don't know if that's the exact number, but it was super close, but she fell short just again. It was pretty much the like the same song and dance as Big Brother 24. But I mean, she was the first one out. I can't be hyping myself out too much because she was out in the first episode. Well, we'll get to my uh, MTV picks from the preview and you'll get to brag on me a little bit as well. <laughs> I chose the chalk answer of Fessel to look out for and he was the only Big Brother player technically to make it to the finals. I also chose Alyssa S, which... I felt was like a Hail Mary toss, but she actually went pretty deep into the season. So I'm kind of happy about that. Uh, she was able to use her social game and uh, some flirt mans to, to get deep into the season. So um, happy about that. Survivor, no surprise. You chose Desi and Chris, um, the two winners of the season to keep an eye out for. And I chose Michaela and Chris, which uh, again, Worked out pretty well. Like yeah, Taylor arguably Rusby. just as well. I feel like we couldn't go wrong unless we pick like Sebastian. Yeah, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I I am really I'm just looking at the list of Survivor women and all of them. I mean, out of the five Survivor women, they all place top six, with Tori being the only person to uh, intersect that group. Uh, and then, yeah, on the on the guy side, it's just Chris and Sebastian, and Chris ended up winning. They chose really good cast. I mean, mm -hmm. every play. I mean, Michaela probably the MVP of the season. Like you said, not just from a physical standpoint, but from everything that she brought. Like, she is such a unique and uh, amazing presence on the show. Uh, just the her style of gameplay and her her straightforward blunt. Uh, she's not afraid of anybody, uh, and she puts up results. She's really fun to watch. I'm so glad that she got another chance to play uh, after Spies, Lies, and Allies. And then even like the other one, like Cassidy, going into four eliminations, winning the first three. Um, Chanel being the one to take out Cassidy, obviously like the, the survivor trio running the season, I guess the only flop you could say is Michelle who got sixth place, won an elimination and brought a lot of entertainment. Like everyone was bringing something to the table. Was there an elimination that really stood out to you as a really good, let's do two, two eliminations that kind of, kind of stick out to you as good, incredibly good and incredibly not that great. Like without thinking too specifically, I thought I liked the eliminations more than I did, but I think I'm thinking of the dailies. I think I enjoyed a lot of the dailies. Mm -hmm. The eliminations weren't <laughs> necessarily my favorite. I enjoyed the Tyler and Monty one because it really did look like a, a real challenge for both of them. Like, a uh, a balance endurance race where it's, it felt like both of them just kept coming so close and then falling. I'm sure it was incredibly frustrating for them and probably for the people watching because it went for like three hours. I think I liked the idea of the, it was the one that Tori and John A did. I liked the concept of that where the balls are raining down and you have to fight for one and bring it to your side. But I didn't love the execution only because it was a slaughter. But what, what were the eliminations that you enjoyed, Drew, before we get into the ones that I didn't quite like? So I really like Too Cool for Spool. Um, but to name two different ones, um, I like Top Heavy. That one seems like so cartoonish, but so much fun at the same time. Yeah. And if you get like a little bit more of a competition between the two people, I think it could be really exciting. And the other one I would say is I kind of liked Hot Wheels. Just a little well, Hot Wheel, the like copyright. Uh, I I kind of liked Hot Wheel. It was different oh, than like yeah. a tug of war. It was the one between Cassie and Michelle at the very end. So those two, I think, are my top of the of the season. All right, where's what's some that weren't so great? Oh, uh, see, there's so many to talk <laughs> about. I, I'll try not to take them all, but I will go with I, I'll I'll go with um, the first. On the guy side, which is Polly and Bananas, which okay. is kind of, there is something that I really do like about it. I like how it was kind of a repeat of their elimination in Final Reckoning. This was kind of similar to that, and it's like still like the same head to head. But I didn't like how after all the bags were tossed, it was just like, oh, okay, what this person is most likely going to win. And it's just a matter of the ice melting. I like when eliminations can end with like that. Like, like pole wrestles, they end 
when someone gets it and it's like the big moment and then it's yeah. the winner. Whereas in this one, it's like a slow crawl to the finish line and you know <laughs> who's most likely going to win. And it's just the two standing there. And then the other one, which is the elephant in the room is the hall brawl, which yeah. what was the point of even having the hall brawl in there? Having it just come down to a, a simple puzzle after the fact with the shapes totally negates the whole point of the hall. Like what is the the winner of the hall brawl gonna get like a four second head start maybe over the other person and then this type of puzzle is as we saw uh fessy uh fessy do or he just went and guessed and then just yeah. tapped his board and then went and guessed again it was just i don't know i didn't like the mashup this was such a disappointing waste of something to be called a hall brawl uh with pillows and a puzzle that was so just bad it was bad <laughs> I really the two that I don't like mainly were for the men's side of things. And I think it's just because of the execution of it. Um, Crankshafted West versus Dusty. I hate turn based daily challenges in the sense that you have to one person gets to go. Then you have to reset everything up and nothing can be one for one. 100% the same on either side. And then the times can get mixed up. And there was a whole bunch of question marks after this elimination. And then um, I think it's just the maybe Chris just made it look too good or too easy. But barrel tag seemed pretty nonchalant, uh, Mm -hmm. anticlimactic. The same thing with we already mentioned it, but Trick Trick Boom was also whatever, in my opinion. At least it was fun to look at. Barrel tag took 20 seconds on Chris's side, at least. And it was just like, all right, cool. I guess it's done. It's done. (laughs) Like three minutes collectively. (laughs) Now let's go into the let's go into the daily challenges real quick. Was there a daily challenge that kind of stood out to you as a really good daily challenge? Yeah, there were a lot that I like. I don't know what it's called. I'm really bad at like remembering the names of stuff. So I'm just going to describe it. It was the it was one of the last dailies. I think it was the second to last daily challenge with the puzzle pieces. And they had to run into like the castle Mm. ruins to find it. And I love that they didn't tell them how many pieces there were. I think that really added a whole different element to the game where especially in the beginning, like nobody knows how many there are. So there's just people running back and forth. You don't know when you're done. You get the moment of Michaela lying to bananas saying, oh, there's nothing back here. You don't got to worry about it. I thought that one was super fun. I thought it was fun to watch. I thought the location was great. Overall, it was it was such a good daily. Uh, it's called Brain Squeeze, which uh, I... Uh, it's a little head scratching. Some of the, the yeah. names of <laughs> that the name. daily. I'm actually really surprised. Bananas just was like, "Yeah, I'm totally cool. Yeah, I'm totally gonna believe you." When it's I'm like, gonna believe you. What? <laughs> <laughs> like my one that I really, really liked. Oh man, I, I really. I'll be honest. I really liked uh, Slippery Business. The women were way better at watch. Like we, were, it was way better and more contested. I feel like with the women's side than mm-hmm. the men's side. The men's side Definitely. all just worked together. And they kind of just did their thing. It's like they set up matches where it's like, all right, you yeah. you go take out Tyler now. You you two go for Chris. And then they like reset. And I don't know, that was weird. But it seemed like the women, they were just like, I'm going for you, even if we're aligned. Like, I'm here to win. I'll, I'll just be happy that Corey beat Fessel. Uh, yeah, honestly, cool. I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, one daily that I didn't like, and I'm just going to put it out here. It's, uh, to me, it's one of the worst dailies, especially... One of the last dailies of the season heading into the finals was Burst Your Bubble. I don't know what the heck they were thinking. I'm sure it looked cool on paper being like, we can get two hot air balloons. But all it was is just going up a rope ladder and then walking a a very high balance beam, which I don't get me wrong. I would be like sweating. My palms would be sweaty. I don't like height. But it was so anticlimactic at the very end uh, to me. So I would I would put that one as a definitive (laughs) <laughs> the worst daily of the season and yeah no i i think that is without a doubt one of the lamest finishes like i'm looking through all the dailies right now and i really feel like all of them were really good now let's get into the mtv players that we said keep your eyes on you mentioned tori and Corey, which both made the finals so congratulations uh, for that. I picked John A. and West, the All-Stars 3 winners. 
And uh, I, you kept your eyes on him until you couldn't, <laughs> which John A. was out in episode two. And Wes mm-hmm. lasted a little bit longer. Um, I do want to ask, because you did say keep your eyes on Tori. How surprised were you that there was a purge in the finals and the two people purged were Tori and Fessel? I think on paper, it's very surprising. But when you look at how it happened, um, like it really did seem like those checkpoints uh or the like the risk the checkpoints stations, I yes believe. the risk stations those were so heavily impactful which i mean obviously but on the flip side of things like axe throwing most of these people haven't really done it someone like fessy had the right idea and it just didn't work out for him and the fact that it came down to axe throwing oh you didn't do it sorry you're gonna have a huge disadvantage going to the second station and if you're the last person to the second station you're out and i could be wrong but i feel like tori and fessy were the only people to fail the axe throwing and because of that they they were purged so on paper it is a little bit surprising but like seeing how it went out like how it all happened made it a little bit less surprising but that was that was a little weird i didn't love that they purged it after the second. So it's very interesting because I didn't notice until Bananas mentioned it, but uh, Chris was on his last axe and he sunk his last axe because he would have failed it because he missed the first four. So he actually got really super like oh, wow. lucky. He got the last one. The biggest deficit in the risk station was not doing the 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 scale the rock the scales rocks. because yeah that shortcut like was tough but i mean if you didn't do the rock scale to get the atv you're done like you're sunk <laughs> like, what are you gonna do <laughs> yeah so i mean Michaela didn't do it and she um her body like went into overdrive and couldn't finish the final and uh johnny failed it and then had to run it yeah i mean after that atv section there was nothing else left to the final so i feel like that atv really skewed hard if you if you got on your first only one time you can do it i mean that that was a huge game changer in my opinion mm-hmm. but yeah you're there right wasn't enough, the there wasn't enough time to catch up after that like if it would have made a lot more sense to do the ATV way earlier on because it was also just such a huge help for those people to get that rest. Like you've already run oh, yeah. six or so miles at that point, getting you know four or five minutes to rest up. You get to ride the ATV. That's all good. But if that happens in the beginning when you don't necessarily need that rest and there's so much more time to catch up. I feel like that would have been a little bit more balanced, but what are you going to do about it? So you were kind of you were kind of right in the way that you said Wes could be in a world of trouble. And technically, all of the MTV vets were in a world of trouble in the beginning. Wes was kind of in the hot seat, especially in episode six when he went up against Dusty. It's like, do you feel that this is Wes's last season or the last time we'll see him on the challenge? I mean... The obvious answer is no. What a underwhelming way to go out. Not even that he went out poorly, but just for it to be USA 2. Um, it just mm-hmm. feels like a weird one. Like, I could have understood it if it was, you know, All-Stars 3. He wins. He rides off into the sunset with the with the crown. Um, that would have felt more fitting. But coming here... It, it just didn't feel right for it to be his last season. But, I mean, it doesn't matter how I feel. It's literally just if he wants to come back or not. He might be satisfied. He's been doing it for 20 years. He's won a few times. So, although I would hope that it is not actually his, like, full retirement, I, I guess I could see him just being like, no, I'm actually done. Sorry. Yeah, you kind of, like, hit the nail on the head for me. Like, for this to be his final time on USA 2, a spinoff, as well as a lot of his last episode was surrounded by Josh. And, like, <laughs> yeah. Josh, like, crying about putting his ball in the in the hopper. And, I mean, you really want to go out on, on – that. that kind of storyline is kind of weird, but I'm sure that we will see him on an All Stars season where it's only like three to four weeks of filming, and if it's the mm-hmm. right time, uh, and then maybe he can win again. If we look at our early boots prediction, which is normally like the first couple of episodes that we're we're going by, 
Uh, Wes left or was eliminated. Wes was your pick. Uh, and Wes left in episode 10. So technically not an early. Definitely boot. did not. That wasn't that <laughs> early. Um, I picked Tiffany who left in episode seven. Still not early before the uh, solo game started, but mm -hmm. not. I wouldn't count it as an early boot for me. Long shot picks. You picked Lewis from <laughs> Amazing Race. <laughs> And I picked Chanel uh, from Survivor. Again, I kind of went chalky picking Chanel, a Survivor player, uh, okay. knowing the Survivor reputation in the Challenge USA. Uh, what do you think about Lewis and Dusty's performances and how they uh, came into the season? I mean, they came in at such a huge disadvantage already with just not having a team to back them up. It was just the two of them. Um, and I mean... In terms of the guys, they were out second and third, so it, they didn't perform exceptionally well. I still don't know how I feel about Dusty. I thought his Johnny Bananas uh, storyline was a little weird, how much he seemed to idolize him. Yeah, I I would love to see Lewis back. Um, I think that Lewis I liked. Yeah, I didn't say anything about coming him, in. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, it's all good. Uh, I'll I'll talk about Lewis. I I, I really liked him. I wish he would have stayed longer. It sounded like. Lewis came in feeling like he was connected uh, way more than what he actually was. I, I don't think his connections were battle tested as the other ones, or maybe he underestimated how close maybe Josh was to the vets and how much he would have their back over Lewis's. Um, and then the same with Dusty getting kind of, uh, I don't know, like getting hypnotized by bananas and being the fandom and standom that that he is i mean i really felt bad for lewis because not only was he coming in with only two amazing race people but he was coming in almost like a solo wolf at a certain yeah. point like it's 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 rough I, I think we know that my long shot worked out with chanel getting second yeah, place overall second place um, impressive long shot choice i, I mean I, I don't know if it is impressive because i picked survive a survivor but she still had to play the game she played uh, smarter, not harder. I think she was overshadowed by like Michaela as well as the other players that had a lot more of a storyline going through it. I mean, Chanel kept her head in the game. Didn't I mean she had these like rivalries with Cassidy, but th she didn't have a ton to show. Like she was just doing her thing. Like she was playing a very efficient game, and when you're playing an efficient game. Maybe there's not a lot to sh uh, show on the camera yeah. or anything like that, but I she played it. She did the dang thing and she got uh, second place for the women. Let's go into our MVP picks that we picked on the preseason. Uh, you chose Tyler initially. I chose Amanda. Both did well, but I do have to give you some kudos because you did throw out Michaela's name as a possible MVP pick. Uh, along with Tyler, and I have to say, like, I think you nailed, uh, I think you nailed it on the head with picking Michaela. I mean, how could you not? I mean, she won five competitions, three yeah. of which were solo, the most uh, solo wins of the season. And then she got to the finals, only made, only had to go into one elimination. She was the entertainment to the season with her in incredible confessionals, as well as getting in people's faces. And not having that much repercussions from them because she was just intimidating. She had all the deals. Uh, the only bad part was that she didn't officially finish the the finals. But that's the only blemish I found on her on her record. Uh, what do you think about uh, your our MVP picks? And I mean, you got to feel good about picking Michaela. <laughs> yeah, for Michaela, I mean. I think the thing that I appreciated the most about her is that her, she was always thinking about these, she was always planning. She <laughs> went in with an idea and although it didn't always work out for her, she was thinking about what to do and was trying to go through with it, which, and it, they weren't just like, okay, I've got my alliance. I'm going to sit tight. It's going to be fine. It was no, why don't we throw Tori in? Let's do it. She got talked out of it the first time. So what'd she do? She went and won the next daily and was like, I'm going to do it this time. You, you talked to me out last time, but this time I really think we should do it. I, I really appreciated that about her. She crushed it. I didn't like, I knew Michaela was strong, but I didn't realize until the daily with where they were all oiled up and wrestling 
where I was just like, oh my God, Michaela is like, she is pretty rich. She is, I knew she was strong, but she is definitely like a specimen. Um, she crushed it. Definite MVP. All right, let's go into our winner picks because uh, we both got the right winner, one half of the winners with Desi. Uh, but our men pick were a little bit off. At least they both got to the finals because uh, your winner picks were Desi and Fessel, whereas my winner picks was Desi and Corey. I mean, not too far off. Uh, we both missed out on Chris, which I've... I've believe we both felt were that would have been a long shot <laughs> yeah <laughs> like he called it with only two survivor guys um it, yeah it would have been harder to pick chris as uh opposed to somebody who seems so much more well insulated like a Corey or a fessy chris had an impeccable season i mean if we're gonna give michaela the uh, the mvp on one side i think we would give chris the mvp on the other side just because of everything he had to go through we're wrapping things up here i want to ask what was your overall feeling about this season of USA season two? Did you like it better than USA season one? And would you love to see a USA season three or would you like to see CBS do a USA season three? Definitely. This is probably my favorite season of the challenge that I've watched live um, since total madness. I thought that this was a ton of fun. I really, and I get that this isn't like going to happen really ever. But I really loved how in the beginning of the season, there were two episodes a week. It kept the pace moving. It had me excited to watch the next one. And I didn't have to wait a week. I just had to wait a few days. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was a super good season. I really liked it. I think it's way better than, well, I don't want to say way better than season one, but I just liked it a lot more than USA one. And I really hope they keep making these. I think they're a fun spinoff. I really do enjoy I'm super biased because I come from the CBS side of the reality shows, but I really enjoy it. I like watching the new people come in where I feel like in the flagship series, uh, whenever there's like a couple new rookies there, it's just the way the challenge works. Like you're, you're the rookie, you're going to get thrown in. It's a lot harder to find your ground, but here, even with the MTV vets thrown into the mix it still felt like everyone was on equal footing except for the amazing racers they had you know they were starting yeah. five miles behind everyone else um, but i really do appreciate this spinoff and i hope they keep making it. i'm not going to be uh sugarcoating anything i think usa 2 was leagues ahead of usa season one i had many critiques about usa season one uh but usa season two was awesome i wish they would have shown a ton more of the drama. Like we didn't even get yeah. to see Pascal and Josh. Like I swear there were arguments. fights they showed in the promo that just never yeah. showed up. It would have taken this season up such another notch. I do ag agree that this was a really, really good season. I came in open-minded, but skeptical. And I left feeling like this was a, such a good season. It had such great storylines, a really good cast. Um, I believe that they're going to keep on making these. We wrap things up. I just, I figure this is more of like a natural ending point. Um, is that it almost feels to me like this is taking it back to the original concept of the challenge where the challenge originally started with the real world versus road rules. And obviously it blossomed into what it is today. Um, but it almost feels like a CBS version of that where obviously you have your other shows thrown in but it does feel like your big brother your survivor they're pulling mostly from these recent seasons and they're bringing them onto the challenge and if it keeps doing well and it keeps going it's like this little like baby cbs rebirth of the original concept uh which i really like i think that that's a really good point because i never even thought of it like that but there is like this this war within the fandoms almost of like, who will get the upper hand? Is it the mm -hmm. survivor players? Is it the survivor players? I think I just said survivor twice. Yeah. I the mean, they, they totally won this, this time <laughs> and in USA won. So it makes yeah, sense I, to say it like that. I'm almost intrigued if there's going to be more emphasis, like if say some, more MT, uh, MTV vets come on the next USA three season. And then they have big brother and it's like big brother, Please listen to me. We have to go after Survivor. Like <laughs> they've won twice now. Like we got to stop them. They are but, four for four on the winners so yeah. far. Yeah, it's it's wild. It's it there's it's really really interesting. Thank you so much. Uh, this is so much fun getting to talk with you about USA uh, and the challenge because 
we don't normally get to like cross over too much. So it's yeah. really awesome that we have this opportunity to cross over where it's a big brother, a CBS meets the challenge. And hopefully we could do it more times throughout the years and that we can be doing this when USA season 16 will be coming out. Um, later <laughs> down the line. But uh, thank you so much. Uh, what are you doing over on your channel? And if you have anything to plug your social media or your YouTube channel, uh, please plug it. Yeah, I mean, I'm still just Big Brother 25, about to come to an end. I'm really excited for that because, I mean, it's funny to plug myself to say that I'm taking a break. But yeah, I've got, I think, three more videos coming out, um, kind of talking just about the end of Big Brother 25 and just how the end of Big Brother seasons work. Just a little retrospective of the final HOH and then some of the uh, like funny, like final words from jurors as they vote for a winner. So those are more just like lighthearted, fun videos to talk about. Um, I have been tweeting a lot more this year, uh, just over uh, Ethan Mill on Twitter. But really, that's all I have to plug. It's it's definitely not the time to come and see my content because I am going on a little bit of like, you know, a few month break. Don't sell yourself short with your content over there because, hey, this is the time to binge watch uh, all your content that you've been putting out because you've been putting out a mass amounts of content throughout the whole Big Brother season. Uh, it seems like every time I log in to YouTube and then hit my subscription, uh, you're posting another video on top of another video. And I'm like, this dude is working overtime. There is and, definitely uh, quite a big back catalog now. Now that I'm, <laughs> I'm looking through, I'm just like, oh, my gosh, there, there's a lot of videos now. So I guess if you wanted a binge, I think it would take quite a while to get through. <laughs> well, there you go. So do it. And then if you start binging now. Uh, you might be coming up on the next Big Brother season. <laughs> so <laughs> definitely get started. Uh, you're doing a great job over on your YouTube channel at Ethanamail on YouTube.com. Uh, so keep up the great work. Thank you for sitting down with me. Uh, this was a lot of fun. It's always a lot of fun. And yeah, it's a lot it. of fun to see how right we can be with how much information we both have on these players combining ourselves, like our minds. Uh, but then again, it's also humbling when we get something completely wrong, a.k.a. Mm -hmm. that Xavier pick from USA Season 1. Exactly. But it's always Picking fun. Desi to win, but then also picking Amira to do well, and she's out <laughs> first. Hey, uh, I'll keep on saying it. We said keep our eyes on them, and you kept your eyes yeah. on them until they were out <laughs> in episode were two. <laughs> Johnny and Amira. Oh, man. But uh, thank you again, and see you all next time. Peace. Take care.